for most of the country, we actually celebrated, as we do every time it rains in Israel, because the Kinneret rose and it's essential to our water supply, but in a uh, small community, gated community called Bat Chever, which is on the border of uh, Tulkarim. Literally, it borders Tulkarim, the city under Palestinian Authority control. For them, it was anything but a blessing. I mean, you had 400 houses sustained damage. You had water up to 1.7 meters high. Uh, families, uh, about 40 to 60 families, totally lost everything, lost their entire homes. They're going to have to do a uh, renovation. They'll be out of their houses for six months. So for them, it was a disaster. There was a gap, actually, in the security barrier, which... Um, which, which is the source of all the water which came in from Tolkarim, from the Shechem River, and it just overflowed into the city. And there were literally certain cases where people were holding on for their lives, uh, afraid that they were going to be swept up in what, be, what, had, uh, what then became a river. Now, you were there today. What did you see there? Uh, today, I saw a lot of, the, uh, a lot of sanitation crews on the scene, uh, because a lot of the, the water was mixed with mud and sewage uh, cleaning up. I saw a lot of houses which were totally damaged, totally gutted. All the people's properties were in their front yards, and uh, the, the residents are no longer there. They're either renting apartments or staying by friends and family in different parts of the country. It is just a, a pool of a mixture of water, mud, sewage, etc., and uh, the people there are really, really suffering now a week later. Now, you uh, weren't there just to, to see how it looks. You came there uh, on a mission. Yeah, I actually, uh, it's the power of social media. I got a Facebook message from a person I never met who lives in the area asking for help, saying, you know, somebody, can you do something? Reach out to Bar Hefer. And uh, within 24 hours, thanks again to, to social media, which obviously we see it can be used for good in certain situations, I was able to uh, spread the message out to Gush Etzion, Beit Shemesh, Ramat Beit Shemesh, Yerushalayim, um, even the people in Migron uh, heard somehow got wind of the uh, the campaign, and they also donated uh, clothing and shoes and pots and pans and blankets and the things that people essentials that people don't have. It's winter down in Israel. It's cold at night, and these are things that they desperately needed. So, um, through a volunteer, uh, a man named Mark, who I never met in my life, he sent me a Facebook message. Since uh, because of my connections in the world of journalism, I said, is there anything you can do? Next thing you know, uh, 24 hours later, I was driving my small Mazda 3 full to the brim. I couldn't see out of my back window, um, full of donations from literally uh, six or seven different places. My lad, Dumim, Jerusalem, people uh, really gave with all their hearts. And how were the responses in Bat Uh They're extremely, extremely uh, grateful towards not only this uh, batch of goods which were donated, but to all the volunteers who over the last five days have come out literally to clean and to scrub using chemical products uh, with with uh, brooms and uh, all sorts of things. You had companies who donated clothing like Fox donated clothing to the residents as well and different cleaning companies donated their products to the to the to the community so they are extremely grateful on one hand on the other hand they know it's a long road ahead of them they're negotiating with the government now in order to uh, you know obtain some kind of compensation for the lost damage uh, damaged property and one of the big problems is a lot of the people there a good portion of them did not have full insurance on their homes. They may have had homeowners, but not property insurance or vice versa. Some didn't have any. I mean, you're talking about a, a gated community where it's quiet, where you don't have a lot of crime, etc. So a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, took the chance of not purchasing insurance. So those people were hit the hardest. Um, you have 100 plus cars were damaged, destroyed uh, in, the, in the flood. And uh, again, people, thank God, nobody lost their life. But there were people, there was one six-year-old man who was hanging on to a pergola for three hours, afraid if he moved, he'd be swept away in the overflowing river. So thank God he's okay. But in terms of financial loss, you're talking about 40, 50 million shekel in loss. I guess it's Israel's version of Sandy, Hurricane Sandy. It's, I guess, on a smaller level. But to the people of Bar are this is their life. And uh, totally, uh, in some cases, uh, destroyed, all their property destroyed as a result.